Hey Kevin here from DOADork.com. Today I want to show you a super simple way to make your own chalk paint plus a couple of tips on how to use it. So check this out. Alright, so to make your chalk paints, real simple. First things first, you need some paint. Now I bought cheap stuff at Menards, but like a lot of things, the better quality you buy, probably the better your results. But I'm just using cheap stuff, I think it would be just fine. And I got acrylic latex, that's what you're looking for. This is the water-based stuff you'd use for like the walls on the inside of your house. That will work great. And I got mine in an interior eggshell finish. Now eggshell is like one notch above flat and one notch under satin, but any three of those would work. I've done this with satin and it worked just fine. You'd probably get your best results with flat. So I thought for the video I'd try eggshell because it'll work great. Now you could probably technically do this with semi-gloss or gloss, but it defeats the purpose because you don't want any shine. You want it nice and flat to get that chalky look. All right, so what we're going to add to it is plaster of Paris. Now you want this in a powder form, so I found it in a four pound little tub here. It's about six or seven bucks, so it's not very expensive, and you really don't need a whole lot of it compared to your paint, so this should last a long time. All right, now you're going to need a little bit of water. We're going to mix that with the plaster of Paris to turn it into sort of a, a runny paste before we add the paint to mix it all up. And then of course you're going to need something to actually mix it in. So you could do it in a bowl, but I'd recommend probably a jar, so that way after you're done mixing it, you can seal it so it doesn't dry up on you. And I got mine with a wide mouth jar so that my brush will actually fit in there. And then of course you're going to need a brush, something to mix it with, and either measuring cups or some type of measuring device so you can get an accurate uh, measurement whenever you're actually mixing it. So now let me show you how to actually make it. All right, now the recipe is really simple. It's one part plaster of Paris to three parts paint. And of course we're going to add just a little bit of water to turn this into a paste before adding the paint, but that's it. It's real simple. So for my little glass jar, I'm going to use one third a cup of the plaster of Paris and then one full cup of paint. If you only needed a little bit, you could do it with tablespoons. If you needed a lot of it and for some reason the only thing you had available was a bucket and a coffee mug, you could do one full coffee mug of plaster of Paris, dump it in your bucket, add a little bit of water, turn it into a paste, and then put three coffee mugs of paint in there, and it would work just the same. Just keep the ratio like that, and it'll work out great. So let me go ahead and mix it up, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I've been mixing it for about a minute or so, and it's nice and lump-free now. It's about the consistency of mayonnaise or so, maybe just a little thinner, which is just about right. So now I can go ahead and add in my paint, get it mixed up real nice, and it'll be ready to go. All right, so I've been mixing it now with the fork for a couple minutes, and it's nice and smooth, ready to go. For this little jar, the fork worked fine, but if you're going to do it in a bowl or a bigger bucket or something like that, you could dedicate an old electric hand mixer or one of those stick blenders, and it would smooth out even quicker. So now let me show you how easy it is to use. All right, so I picked up this old coffee table at the thrift store the other day for $15, and I thought it would be perfect for this project. Now normally if I'd paint it with regular acrylic latex paint, I'd have to sand the whole thing, then clean all that dust off, let it dry, then put on some primer, let the primer dry, then sand that primer, smooth it out, then clean that up with another damp rag, let that dry, then put on my paint. It'd take a couple of coats and be coated. And it'd look really nice, but it is a lot of work. The cool thing about chalk paint is you can skip almost all that. All you gotta do is take a damp rag, clean the whole thing off of dirt, make sure, let that dry, and then you can move straight to painting. And it should stick. It might take about two coats, maybe three, and uh, it's not gonna come off and peel off like regular latex paint would do if you hadn't sanded and primed it first. Now, one little tip I found whenever you're painting with this, is to keep it stirred every once in a while just so it doesn't settle on you and then when you're not painting go ahead and put your lid back on there to keep it from drying out because it does have that plaster perish and you don't want it to start hardening up on you so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and start painting this and then i'll probably distress some of these little um the little ridges and the little ripples on the edge and then i'll show you how you can protect it at the end because you gotta think with chalk paint it's gonna be a really flat finish so it could scuff up and all that so you're gonna want to protect it with something after it's all done so i'll do all that next
check that out after I hit it with the sanding block. All those lines are popping real nice now. Looks pretty cool. Now one thing you may notice is that here, these two right here I haven't touched yet. That is the original top chalk finish which looks really nice. If you're not going to distress your piece, that's how it would look. But because I ran my sanding block through all these lines to get that wood to pop out, you can see where I've sanded it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my sanding block just real quick and even them out so they look like this. Now, of course, they are coated in dust. I'll have to clean them up uh, before I clear coat. And the reason I want to clear coat is because this chalk paint is really, really flat. And if you know anything about flat paint, it will mark really easily. So someone sat a cup up on here or scratched something against it, here's what will happen. It's going to leave a mark. You don't want that. So we need to protect it with something. But I want that really flat, chalky look, so I don't want to protect it with just anything. I need to make sure I'm using like a matte or a flat finish. I'll show you a couple options you can use. Okay, so here's a couple of clear coat options I happen to have in my workroom that I wanted to show you. First one is wipe on poly. This stuff's really easy to use. Just pour some on a rag and wipe it on. It's easier than dipping a brush in regular poly. It's a little thinner, so it spreads easier. My main issue with this one is that the one I have is a clear gloss. If it was a matte finish or maybe even a satin, I might think about it, but I don't want chalk paint to look glossy. Also, poly will turn kind of yellow or amber colored over time, which could look cool on a distressed piece like this if you want that kind of old look. But on light colors, sometimes it just doesn't look right. So I could use clear lacquer. This stuff is basically crystal clear. The main issue with it is it is really, really smelly. You got to use it outside and it's cold out there today. I just don't want to do it. Also, it's a satin finish, the one I have, um, which could look okay. But for this chalk finish, I want something a little flatter than that. Okay, next option is my paste finishing wax. Now, this stuff's pretty cool, it's easy to apply. Just put on a rag, wipe it on, buff it off a few minutes later. And it's kind of like wax in a car. It's fairly easy to put on, but you have to keep it up every couple months. It's not as permanent and long lasting as these others. Also, um, this is kind of similar to the poly in that it will slightly discolor the piece and, and give it kind of an amber look over time. Also, they do make waxes made for chalk paints that are like white and they'll dry clear. You could use one of those, but it's the same thing. You have to keep it up. And it's, you know, like I said, it doesn't last as long and it may not prevent your piece from getting stained up like the others. Okay, my last option I have is polycrylic. This is basically water-based clear coat. It's pretty cool stuff. The main issue with it is that sometimes it gets kind of milky or cloudy looking. So on a dark piece, like let's say I painted this black, it might make it look kind of gray. But the cool part is that it dries quick, it doesn't smell too bad, it's kind of like regular paint. And also the one I have happens to be matte finish. That's what I want. I want a really flat finish. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and just wipe my piece down with a damp cloth, get rid of all that sanding dust, and I'm going to coat it with some of my matte polycrylic and finish this thing up. check it out here's what that homemade chalk paint looks like after it's all dried and then after it has that matte clear coat on there you can see there's just a little bit of sheen which is pretty much unavoidable with any kind of clear coat but uh, still looks really nice you get that dull chalky vintage paint look which is exactly what we we're going for now I did notice as I was distressing it with my sanding block it was a little harder to get it off than even regular latex paint and one of the things about chalk paints is supposed to be so easy to distress but it kind of makes sense because the way I made it with Plaster Paris, it's actually going to be a harder, more durable finish. I mean, basically, this thing is coated with a really light layer of colored plaster. So it makes sense. It's going to be a little more durable. But it looks really cool. It has the exact same look. So I think it's totally worth that little bit of extra effort to uh, distress it if that's what you want to do. Now, also, I noticed that as I was dipping my brush into the jar of paint for my second coat, that it was kind of hitting some of the paint up here that had dried and it was kind of flaking off inside my paint. So as I was brushing it on, I'd see the little spots every once in a while I'd have to take off my finger and rebrush over them. Also, the very bottom of the jar, there was little tiny granules of the uh, plaster Paris that hadn't quite broken up when I was stirring it with my fork. So I'm thinking a way to take care of that is go ahead and try to mix it with like an immersion blender. Try to find one real cheap at a thrift store or something like that. That will mix it really well. And then also as you're using your paint, go ahead, keep it in a jar with the lid tight when you're not using it. And then uh, when you are going to paint with it, just pour some into an old cup or a plate or whatever. And put your lid back on and use the paint over here. And then you shouldn't have to worry about it drying out so quickly. But anyway, this turned out really awesome. It was super easy to make, 
really affordable. You could do it with any kind of color you could imagine, and it looks really cool. It has that nice vintage look. So I hope you like it. I think it turned out really cool.